நண்பர்கள் அனைவருக்கும் வணக்கம் எல்லோரும் நன்றாக இருப்பீர்கள் சமீபத்தில் நான் பேசின தமிழ் வீடியோக்கள் ஆங்கில மொழிபெயர்ப்போட ஆங்கிலத்தில் பேசப்பட்டு தீபா அவர்களால் பேசப்பட்டு மிகப்பெரிய ஒரு நல்ல வரவேற்பை பெற்று வருகின்றன அப்படிங்கிறது எல்லோருக்குமே தெரியும் கிட்டத்தட்ட நாற்பதுக்கும் மேற்பட்ட வீடியோக்கள் ஆங்கிலத்தில் என்னுடைய தமிழ் வீடியோக்கள் ஆங்கிலத்தில் மொழிபெயர்த்து போடப்பட்டு வருகின்றன மிகுந்த வரவேற்பு எல்லோருமே நல்லா வெல்கம் பண்ணுறீங்க தெரியுது இப்பொழுது ஏற்கனவே நான் பேசிய பனிரெண்டு லக்னங்களுக்கும் ஒவ்வொரு தனித்தனி கிரகங்கள் அதாவது பனிரெண்டு லக்னங்களுக்கும் சூரியன் சந்திரன் செவ்வாய் ராகு உள்ளிட்ட ஒன்பது கிரகங்கள் எந்த நிலையில் எப்படி இருந்தால் நல்ல பலன்களை தரும் என்பதை பேசிய ஒரு மிகுந்த வரவேற்பை பெற்ற பன்னிரெண்டு லக்ன வீடியோக்கள் இப்போது ஒவ்வொன்றாக ஆங்கிலத்தில் மொழிபெயர்க்கப்பட்டு அடுத்தடுத்து உங்களுக்கு வர இருக்கிறது இதில் இன்னொரு சிறப்பு என்னென்னா அவ்வப்போது உயர்நிலை வகுப்புகளில் நான் பேசிய சில விளக்கங்கள் சில சூற்றுமங்களை கூட தீபா அவர்கள் வந்து இந்த நடுவில் இந்த பனிரெண்டு லக்னங்களுக்கும் ஒன்பது கிரகங்கள் தனித்தனியே என்ன பலன்களை செய்யும் என்ற ஆங்கில வீடியோக்களுக்கு நடுவே என்னுடைய உயர்நிலை வகுப்புகளில் நான் சொன்ன கருத்துக்களையும் இணைத்து தனித்தனி வீடியோவாக வெளியிட இருக்கிறார்கள் வழக்கம் போலவே இந்த ஆங்கில வீடியோக்களுக்கு உங்களுடைய வரவேற்பு இருக்கும் என்பதை நம்புகிறேன் வாழ்த்துக்கள் எல்லோரும் நன்றாக இருப்பீர்கள் திஸ் ப்ரோக்ராம் இஸ் ப்ரோட் டு யூ பை குருஜி டிவி திஸ் யூடியூப் வீடியோ இஸ் அ டிரான்ஸ்லேஷன் ஆஃப் த டாமு வீடியோ ஆஃப் அ ரெனோண்ட் அஸ்ட்ராலஜர் ஜோதிஷ் மகாகுரு ஆதித்ய குருஜி த லிங்க் ஆஃப் த ஒரிஜினல் வேர்ஷன் தட் இஸ் அ டாமு வீடியோ இஸ் கிவன் இன் த டிஸ்கிரிப்ஷன் பாக்ஸ் ஆஃப் திஸ் வீடியோ This is Astrologer Deepa and I am presenting you the English version of the Tamil video. In my last video, I explained about the effects of moon in 12 different houses for the native of Gemini Ascendant. In this video, I am going to explain the effects of moon in 12 different houses for the native of Cancer Ascendant. For the native of Cancer Ascendant, then Moon resides in the Ascendant house, then Lagna Lord and Rashi Lord are same. When Moon resides in the Ascendant house itself, it is good. In order to make predictions, you have to check the light energy of the Moon, which is waxing or waning Moon and the connection of natural benefits such as Jupiter or or venus if the native is cancer ascendant and cancer rashi the native is considered to be fortunate it is a very good position now let me explain the effects of moon in the second house which is leo this position is better than the position of moon in the ascendant house itself you have to check whether the moon is waxing moon if the moon is subhatva when the moon resides in the ascendant house or the second house moon will deliver great benefits to the native now let me explain the effects of moon in the third house which is virgo when moon resides in the third house which is virgo it is sort of okay based on the strength of the mercury you have to make predictions in case if mercury resides in its own house gemini or gets exalted in virgo it is beneficial now let me explain the effects of moon in the fourth house to the ascendant house which is libra this is such an auspicious position what is the reason because moon gains directional strength that is dikbala here when moon is waxing which has got some light energy and has gained to directional strength as well it is equal to own house status if the native was born as cancer ascendant and libra rashi then the native is considered to be highly fortunate Having said the above, when moon resides in Libra, it gets directional strength which is almost equal to its own house status when it is filled with light energy. So, when it resides in Libra, it will deliver benefits 
equal to the native of Cancer Ascendant and Cancer Rashi. Now let me explain the effects of Moon in the house of Scorpio. Here Moon gets debilitated and loses its Thanabala. Moon will not deliver worse effects if it is heading close towards Purnima or in connection with Jupiter or Venus though it gets debilitated here. On the contrary, if the moon in Scorpio has got connection with Saturn or Rahu, it will deliver worse effects. Since this is a trine house, when moon resides here, it should definitely be a waxing moon and it should have got light energy. In this case, though it is debilitated, it will not deliver worse effects. So, in those natal charts where the moon is debilitated in the house of Scorpio in the fifth house and it has got a lot of light energy, you don't need to panic. Don't worry about it. If the natal was born as Vaikasi Visagam, that is during the month of Vaisaka and Star Visaga, then it is considered to be very auspicious. Here, you should not make predictions like Ascendant Lord is debilitated. Mr. APJ Abdul Kalam was also the native of Cancer Ascendant and Scorpio Rashi. He is such a great man who was praised and loved by all the people. But he did not get married. The reason is the Ascendant Lord is debilitated. The responsibility of a man and the motivation of the birth is to grow the hereditary system. This is the motivation of the birth of a human being, which is of course the philosophy of life. The astrological reason that why Mr. APJ Abdul Kalam could not grow his hereditary is and died unmarried is his ascendant lot got debilitated. In any situation, the Ascendant Lord should not lose strength. When Moon has got light energy, though it is debilitated initially and it gains its light energy later. There is a difference between when Ascendant Lord is exalted and when the Ascendant Lord which gets debilitated initially and gaining its light energy later. When Ascendant Lord is debilitated, definitely there will be some shortcoming. Now let me explain the effects of Moon in the 6th house which is Sagittarius. The native will not have any big shortcoming when he is Cancer Ascendant and Sagittarius Rashi. Though Moon is in the 6th house to the Ascendant house, Moon resides in one of the Upajayasthana's 6th house. This position is considered to be good when Moon has got its own light energy and in connection with Jupiter or Venus. Therefore, when Moon is waxing Moon or heading close to Purnima, or if it is full moon and it has got the connection of Jupiter or Venus, it is considered to be good. Now let me explain the effects of moon in the house of Capricorn, which is the seventh house to the ascendant house. When moon resides in Capricorn, which is the seventh house, it is considered to be good. What is the reason? When moon resides in Capricorn, it will aspect its own house, ascendant house. There is one point you should remember, here it is very much necessary that moon should definitely have its own light energy. Moon should not be definitely Amavasya. Well, now let me explain the effects of moon in the 8th house which is Aquarius. A luminous planet should not reside in the 8th house to the ascendant house. In most of the natal charts, you can see Moon residing in the 8th house in connection with Saturn. This should not definitely happen. Some people show 
uh, ex chief minister mr kamarad's natal chart as an example i believe that this natal chart could not be an example for this a person who was the king maker of the country cannot have the ascendant lord in the eighth house that too in conjunction with saturn this is the reason why i have not discussed so far the natal chart of the ex chief minister mr kamaraj there is no chance that the natal chart where moon resides in the 8th house in conjunction with saturn be the natal chart of the great leader ex chief minister of tamil nadu mr kamaraj many people say that mr kamaraj was native of cancer ascendant and in his natal chart moon resides in the 8th house many people even propagated the wrong idea about the natal chart of mg ramachandran many people thought he was born in 1917 january 17 even many astrologers were predicting based on this date of natal chart which is not true most of the natal charts that you find on internet are quite not trustable you can also see the natal chart of the prime minister mr narendra modi which i really don't find to be true so i kindly suggest that we should not discuss the natal charts of the important people of the country without verifying its credibility for the native of cancer ascendant when moon resides in the 8th house it is not considered to be good only the subatva of the moon can alter this effect the lagna lord should not be in the 8th house to the ascendant house so it should be definitely subatva well now let me explain about the effects of moon in the 9th house to the ascendant which is pisces when moon resides in 9th house it is considered to be auspicious if the moon is a waxing moon it is considered to be auspicious if it is waxing and residing in the trine house it is considered to be auspicious for the native of cancer ascendant when moon resides in pisces it means that the native is cancer ascendant and pisces rashi and in addition to this if it is waxing moon residing in a trine house and if it has jupiter connection it is considered to be more more auspicious therefore the combination of cancer ascendant and pisces rashi is very auspicious now let me explain the effects of moon in the 10th house which is aries when moon resides in the 10th house aries it loses its digbala that is directional strength though it loses its digbala it resides in the quadrant house and it is in good status when moon resides in aries it will be in the 10th house to its own house and when the ascendant lord resides in the quadrant it is considered to be more auspicious and the moon here should have the connection of natural benefits now let me explain the effects of moon in the 11th house which is taurus when moon resides in taurus it gains its highest sthana bala because it gets exalted in the house of taurus one of my subscriber asked what will happen when moon is amavasya and when it resides in the 11th house it is okay because it has got its sthana bala when it resides in taurus for the native of cancer ascendant when moon resides in the 11th house it is good you have to gauge this strength like the ascendant lord has got its sthana bala however the light energy of the moon is very less the sthana bala is based on gravity and light energy is related to subatva these are the two different entities of the planet the tithi ashtami and navami have great gravitational force this is related to sthana bala 
when the ascendant lord is in the 11th house in taurus and in addition to this if it is waxing moon or if it is purnima it delivers immense benefits in case if moon is waning or amavasya then the benefits delivered by the moon or less however the native of this cancer ascendant where the moon has less light energy in the 11th house will be a strong person now let me explain the effects of moon in the 12th house that is gemini for the native of cancer ascendant when moon resides in 12th house that is gemini it is not such a great shortcoming when the ascendant lord resides in 12th house it means that the native will settle abroad or will travel a lot the planet moon itself signifies a lot of traveling or shifting from one place to another the 12th house also signifies the transformation so when the significance of the planet and the house effect matches with each other what will happen it means that this native will always love to travel would always love to shift from one place to another the native will be away from his birthplace and will be always traveling if you observe the native of cancer ascendant whose ascendant lord moon resides in the 12th house you will definitely find the native to be always traveling the native will be away from his place will be living abroad etc they will definitely be in a situation where they cannot live in their native place therefore it is not such a great shortcoming when the ascendant lord resides in the 12th house when moon is subhatva when it resides in the 12th house it will deliver great benefits to the native of cancer ascendant In my next video I'm going to explain the effects of moon in 12 different houses for the native of Leo ascendant. Well, this is question time. For the native of Cancer ascendant, when the moon gets debilitated in Scorpio, which is the 5th house, what is the antidote for this planetary position? Please write your answers in the comment section of this video. Many people had requested to add the playlist link of all the English videos. We have done it. Please check the description box. The link of Aditya Guruji's website is given below in the description box of this video, which is accessible by both iOS and Android users. The link of Google Play Store app is also given in the description box. that is available for only android users and many people also request the tamil version of every english video please check in the description box we are adding the link of the tamil video in the description box of every video please write your feedback to astro.writetous@gmail.com thank you